Coverage of local high school football on WCIA3 is sponsored by Lowland Ray Insurance Group and Illinois State University. This is Friday Football Fever. Welcome into Friday Football Fever. I'm Marley Weird alongside Andy Olson for our final show of the year. Andy, it's hard to believe we're finally here. Yeah, we have a jam-packed show tonight with several area teams playing for their spot in the playoffs, while others look to close out a perfect regular season. Plus, Brett Barron's reports from Penn State where the Illini play tomorrow. Let's not waste any time getting started. As always, scores are rolling at the bottom of your screen, so let's get right into those highlights. First up, we had to Monticello hosting Unity tonight. Maybe we can get a little music in here both teams have guaranteed their spot in the postseason but the Rockets have a chance to close out the regular season 9 and 0 Rockets lead by a touchdown heading into the second quarter but the Sages make a convincing fake handoff there it'll be Tyler Bundy into the end zone for the score to tie it up on to the next Monticello possession Joey Sprinkle will be picked off by Unity's Will Cowan to take it the other way Andy this was an incredible game look at that play there Oof. Cowan the interception Center Unity takes over, there. but check this out. On the ensuing <laughs> drive, Monticello says, hey, you know what? Right back at you. Bundy again, Ooh. this time with a big interception. Less than two minutes to go in the half. Sages here have another chance before halftime. Sprinkle pulling out the hook and ladder play. An unbelievable run here from Jacob Tackett. That leads to another Sages touchdown for the lead. Great play. But this one to overtime, 33-27. The Rockets come back to finish a perfect season. That's huge in the IPC. Now we head to the Apollo. Muhammad Seymour also has a chance to end their season 9-0 for the first time since 2000. They roll out the red carpets for Bloomington. The Bulldogs wasted no time breaking out the turnover chair as Dayton Eisenman comes up with the interception on the very first play of the game with five minutes to go in the first. Wyatt Baum hits Nolan Narenhausen for the 16-yard touchdown. Take a 6-0 lead at that point. Extra point was blocked by the Raiders with 30 seconds left in the half. Mitchell Gallier drives this five yards up the middle thanks in part some help from the offensive line there for the touchdown then the Bulldogs look to make up for the blocked extra point this bomb hits Braden Pagel here in the corner for the two-point conversion extending their lead the final in this one 21-7 Muhammad with a perfect 9-0 regular season we go on to the CIC where St. Teresa also undefeated they can undefeated excuse me they can finish 9-0 with a win over Warringsburg Latham at home the Cardinals also playoff eligible Warringsburg returning the opening kick but it's a Fumble, Trey Spence recovers it and takes it to the crib for the score. Then Denim Cook out of the backfield. He's been great all season. Hits the spin button and is in with a score. And Caden Wilkins back to pass. And Zaki Hayes is wide open there in the end zone. 55-7 to pure domination. St. Teresa finishes the regular season undefeated. And just like the Bulldogs, Bismarck, Henning, Rossville, Alvin can close out 9-0 with 5-3 Hoopston in town tonight. Michael Hackman busted out the left side. It's coming up. The 15-yard first down here for the Blue Devils. Then Anthony Zamora passes it to Riker Small. The Corn Jerkers only touchdown of the night Pass. was it was now back to the Blue Devils for a two point conversion punch through the middle by Rhett Harper. This one 58 seven Blue Devils also finish undefeated. In the Lincoln Prairie, playoff eligible Villa Grove host Arthur Lovett at Wood Hammond. The Knights need a win if they want to keep their season alive. Caden Fagan on the loose. He picks up the first. Look out, cameraman. I almost got bulldozed Ooh. by Caden Fagan there. That's a D1 athlete, folks. He is large. Then at the goal line, Fagan calls his own number, and he's in for the score. Makes it look easy against the Blue Devils. Then later in the first half, Knights punting. But it's over Lynn Waldrop's head. Uh-oh, fire. They're yelling on the goal line. He picks it up, tries to kick it once more, but it's blocked by Brady Clodfelder, oh and it's recovered by Hunter Butts for the score. Final, though, Knights able to win 40-22. to They are playoff eligible. And for our final stop for the break, we head to our spotlight game of the week. Centennial needs a win over Crosstown rival Central to become playoff eligible. Centennial fumbles on the very first drive, and it's recovered by Kendrell James for the Maroons, but they would not score on the ensuing drive. Midway through the second now. Amari Moffitt finds the end zone to give 
The Maroons, an eight nothing lead after the two point conversion. Centennial tries to strike back before halftime, picks up 15 on this pass to Braylon Peacock. He is fast, folks, I've seen it up close. Centennial would not score on that drive and Central's Timothy Starks gets the pick to end the drive, but Centennial comes back late, wins this one 15 to eight. They're playoff eligible for the first time since 2015. Andy, I'm glad to see you're doing okay. You doing great. There, you you almost got hit on the sideline. I know. There. I haven't been so lucky, but I'm you glad have been hit. you came back in one piece. I think I would crumble <laughs> if I got hit by Caden. Yeah, so. he, he is a big guy, but it's time for our first break. We have plenty more to come. Brett Barron's reports from Penn State with more on the Illini as they are back on the road this week. But first, more prep highlights are on the way, including stops at PBL, Tuscola, and Urbana for some playoff soccer action. We'll be right back.